Now the A1C test is a very important test. It gives an average of your blood sugar levels over a three month period. Based on your A1C test, your doctor may decide to either change your medications or change the dosages of your medications. So it's quite an important test that doctors use to see how well you're doing. So what if your A1 test is not accurate? What if some factors are causing your A1C to be either falsely high or falsely low? Hello, my name is Kwekwe, I'm a pharmacist. And in today's video, I'm gonna review seven possible reasons why your A1C test may not be accurate. I'm gonna look at reasons why it may be falsely high or reasons where it may be falsely low. Now to better understand some of these reasons that I'm gonna share, it's better to understand how we come about with the A1C test or the result. So first of all, your red blood cells contain a protein, a red protein called hemoglobin, which is responsible for transporting oxygen around the body. Now this hemoglobin can also be attached to sugar or glucose. And when this hemoglobin becomes attached to sugar, it is called a glycosylated hemoglobin or HbA1c. So the higher the amount of sugar or glucose that you have circulating in the blood, the greater the proportion of hemoglobin that would be attached to this glucose and therefore the higher your A1c. Any factor that causes your hemoglobin levels to drop or to increase will give you a false reading or will give you an inaccurate A1C result. So let's start with what can falsely raise your A1C levels. In other words, this is a reading where your A1C is at a level that is higher than what you normally are. So for example, your reading may be seven, but in actuality, maybe you are six. Now the first reason is setting anemias, that is if you are anemic. Anemia is a condition that involves not having inadequate red blood cells circulating around the body and supplying oxygen to all the parts of the body. Now, this, if this anemia is caused by a lack of folate, a lack of vitamin B12, a lack, or a lack of iron, it also interferes with the body's normal production of red blood cells. So what happens is that the old red blood cells stay longer. Normally, you would expect a red blood cell to have a lifespan of about three months, and that is how we get the average A1C over a period of three months. So if the older cells are staying longer and they are not dying off, that means that there is a longer time for them to be attached to glucose, and therefore you have a false reading of an A1C. Your A1C, it appears that there is more sugar in your bloodstream than there actually is, just because you have more red blood cells that are not dying off and are staying on to skew the results to become falsely higher. Number two, high triglycerides. Now triglycerides is a form of lipid or cholesterol, if you want to put it that way, and it's all, it always goes hand in hand with your A1C levels. People who have higher triglycerides tend to have abnormally higher A1C levels, especially if they have a diet that is rich or that is high in added sugars. So watch those triglycerides. The moment your triglycerides go up, there is a possibility or a probability that your A1C may be reading higher than normal. The third reason for a falsely high A1C is disorders of the spleen or if you have spleen surgery. Now the spleen is a small organ located in the left rib cage right above the stomach. Now among, many among the many functions of the spleen, one of them is to remove old red blood cells. So if you have anything that limits the spleen from doing this activity such as sickle cell, or if you have had surgery to the spleen and have a part of the spleen removed, then this function of removing this old red blood cells becomes compromised. And like I explained earlier, you have the old blood cells staying longer, they are attached to more glucose and giving you a false reading or a false high A1C level. Now let's switch our attention to what may cause your A1C to be falsely low. In my opinion, this is also quite dangerous because it gives the impression that you don't have a lot of sugar circulating in your system or you don't have a lot of glucose in your blood, but in actuality, it may be higher than you think. The first reason is anemia treatment. Now, if people are getting anemia treatment, say maybe they're getting B12 shots, they're getting iron supplements, what happens is that their body rapidly starts producing new red blood cells. Now, with the influx of these new red blood cells, there's gonna be a lot of hemoglobin that hadn't gotten a chance to be attached to the glucose. So when you take a reading, you think that, oh, there's not enough or there's not too much sugar circulating in the blood, not knowing that the new red blood cells or the new hemoglobin haven't had enough chance or ample time to be bonded to the glucose to give you that correct reading that you need. That leads me into the, the second reason for a falsely low A1C, which is after blood donation. Now, whenever you donate blood, the body obviously wants to replenish what you've lost. So the body goes into a cycle of rapidly producing red blood cells. 
And as explained earlier, if your body is rapidly producing new red blood cells, there hadn't probably been an opportunity for all those new hemoglobin to be attached to glucose and that may also lead to a falsely low A1C level. Now the next reason is pregnancy. As can be imagined, during pregnancy, the body produces more red blood cells because there's an increased demand for supplying oxygen to the fetus and this increased production of red blood cells may lead to a falsely low A1C. And then we have the next reason, which is hemolysis. Now, hemolysis simply means destruction of breakdown of the red blood cells. And this could be due to a variety of reasons, such as taking some medications, some antiviral medications may cause an increase in hemolysis of red blood cells, or even certain autoimmune diseases may also re result in the breakdown of red blood cells. Now, the, if this happens, it ultimately leads further down the line to a falsely low A1C level. Now, so in case you fall into any of these categories and you're wondering what other test may be appropriate for you to get an accurate reading, well, I'm gonna list three of them that I'm sure your doctor already is aware of and you can also discuss with them. The first one is the fasting blood glucose, which is a glucose reading taken after a fast. So that means that you wouldn't have eaten over a long period of time and then you take your blood sugar test, you take a test and then you compare it to what is the norm. The next one is the glucose tolerance test where the, your doctor will give you a, a, a sweet drink or a sugar drink for want of a better word. And then they will test how quickly your body actually is able to dissipate or metabolize that glucose. And there are standards that they can compare to. Now the third test that you can take is called the fructosamine test. Fructosamine is a protein that is also found in the blood and it can give an average of what your blood sugar readings have been over a period of time. So there are options. So if you believe you fall into any of these categories that I, I discussed, you know, just have a talk with your doctor, find one that works for you. Thank you so much for staying through. Stay blessed. Catch you on the next video.